Right guys, Mark Crossfield here. Today I am Phil. Hashtag I am Phil. We're going Callaway, Mac Daddy, PM, Phil Mickelson Grind, Wedges. I've got the 56 and the 60 in my hand. I've used the 60 on the course. I've got data for you as well. I am Phil. Are you Phil? Is this wedge looking at me? Let's get stuck in. So guys, we're talking Mac Daddies here, Callaway PM Grind. So this is the Phil Mickelson Help Design Wedge, along with Roger Cleveland. This is quite a funky looking thing. Comes in three different lofts, I think, with some bounce options. So in my hand here, for instance, I've got the 5613 bounce. I've actually played on the course with the 6010, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's look at the design first. So you've got this extended toe, a much higher toe on this club. So it's a much, uh, there's a bigger bit of club basically just welded on at the top they did in the first prototype. I read somewhere um, because when Phil is opening the club up in long grass and what have you he is finding that he's hitting out in this area and higher up on the face so he's asked for more club to be there makes a lot of sense to me I've also felt that with wedges and I that totally makes sense to me now the thing that's very interesting it's got the grooves all across the face so it hasn't particularly got any more grooves than any other club it's just that they're covering the whole face so from heel almost out to the extreme toe where usually you would have this just milled area here with no grooves along. Again, Phil is saying he's using this area when he's opening the face up and hitting shots, so why not put some grooves there? I actually, um, to blow my own trumpet, here we go, I'm blowing my own trumpet. I actually talked to a wedge company three years ago saying why are there no uh, grooves out on the toe because when I measure with my launch model you might see I put dots on the club, I haven't got them on these ones, but when I've measured you'll see there's dots on my club. They go on the outside of the grooves. Now I was hitting chip shots on that launch monitor and it wasn't picking up strike because I was hitting it out of the toe so I wasn't within the dot so it couldn't see impact. And at that point I thought, well if I'm chipping it there and I was chipping okay, why would I want not want grooves there? So that really makes sense to me. Now by putting this bit of added weight or extra club at the top, what's happened is this club became too heavy. So they've drilled these holes out at the bottom to create these little bug eyes, which is quite a funky looking design. But that loses weight down the bottom which they've used up high in the club. What that also does for um, Callaway are saying is it moves the centre of gravity in this club slightly higher maybe than other wedges. That could, and we'll test to see, help increase spin. If that CG is a bit higher, you hit below the CG, hitting below the CG of a club will often increase spin. If you hit above it, it decreases uh, as a general rule. So having that CG slightly high also could encourage maybe a fraction more spin. It's got grooves which I'm sure are to the tolerance or as close to as they're allowed to get and also milling because grooves and the milling on the face are controlled by RNA, USGA. You're not going to get more spin particularly from a wedge from those kind of things even though some people might say you are. Um, you've got a lot of heel and toe relief on the bottom as well so if you open the club up and what have you move it play those tricky funky shots that Mickelson's famous for and it's also got this kind of U um, shape on the bottom so it's got this kind of extra bounce at the back. Um, great for when you're opening the club up in bunkers and what have you getting more bounce on this back bit where if you've got it sat say quite neutral with the shaft bling you're not getting that it's so much interacting it's more when you open it up and it's at the back there. So it's a really quite funky design and obviously the shape of it is just quite yeah, Space Age. It really reminds me of an old Ping wedge, actually. I'm sure Ping used to make a wedge which was very similar to this. It brings back memories. Um, it's a very interesting club. So putting it down by the ball, I've got a 60 in my hands here. It is a lot of real estate down by the ball, which I'm actually quite liking. Now I've taken this club out on the course um, and I've hit shots with it out playing. You probably can see here these are my marks when I played actually with it yesterday and you can see they're much more out towards the toe and I was actually getting some up here when I was hitting it out of the rough which I seem to be in far too often. Um, so actually on the course I was really enjoying this club. I did feel quite specialised with it as it feels and looks like a very specialised weapon. I like the concept of the higher toe. Um, I think that's really a thing I would actually use quite a lot. It didn't put me off the shape, but I'm not afraid of a different shaped club. Some people just really want wedges and what have you to be very, very traditional. Um, yeah, I was actually really, really impressed with its performance when playing with it. And the shape, 
I'm actually quite enjoying the shape because I relate the shape much more to my performance. If I'm hitting good shots with that slightly different looking shape, then actually I enjoy the shape because I relate it to the good shots that I'm hitting. Let's just show you a bit of data that I captured with it before I played, so it was completely brand new, and I compared it to another, let's say, example A brand new wedge from a major manufacturer. Let's look at some of the spin numbers and how it came out. I can't imagine they're going to change much because lots of that is controlled, but does the CG placement uh, of the club affect it? Let's look at the numbers. Right, so let's look at some numbers. I've hit the first ones between seven and eight yards was my goal for chipping. I was actually going for seven. I averaged seven, hit a couple eight, one at six, spinning at two, three. Now, if I go to a competitor also brand new, Oh, it's quite bright out here today, and my iPad's struggling. Um, if I go to a brand new competitor, it was spinning at 3,000, so it actually spun more at that distance than it did with the uh, Phil Mickelson PM grind, Mac Daddy. Um, strike will play its bigger role than anything on those. If I look at the competitor's 50-yard uh, shot, so I averaged 51, I went a little long and one a little short, uh, 7.8, so 7,800 revs with the competitor. If I look at the Mac Daddy, it was 7,000. And again, the strike's gonna do lots of that. If you actually look at the first one spinning down at only 5,000, so strike will be doing that, goes up to 7.5 if I take that one out. So very similar numbers that I was getting with another manufacturer's wedge, which were both, they were both brand new off the rack. No, you know, they didn't be hit, grooves, face, nothing could have been changed. Um, interesting numbers, not particularly spinning anymore, and I don't think I'd want it. I want it to spin the amount I expect it to spin. Lots of people think maybe that lots of spin is a good thing or more spin is a good thing. I know where I strike the ball on the face is gonna affect that spin more than anything else. The thing I'm loving with this wedge, and it's me, I quite like the funkiness of it, because I'm a funky kind of guy, um, and I do like the high toe. I can totally see why Phil has put that high toe on it or wants it there for when you're opening that face up and you're getting that ball to slightly fluffy a line, you're opening that face up. When I strike this, if I say I'm swinging it, if I've got the face twisted to the right of zero, it doesn't mean my loft's pointing right or the face is pointing right, it means I've twisted the face and now the leading edge is pointing right, but I'm lowering the handle to point the loft straight. If I was to swing zero path, so straight, because of the angle I've twisted the face at around the axis of the shaft, my strike's gonna be starting from the middle, and then the higher up it closes on the face, it's going to be coming exiting right out of this toe area. It's not going to be coming up the middle. What that means is, so if I hit fluffy grass and I get it under the ball a little bit, so I get it late on the face, higher on the face, I'm going to get it out of this extended bit of toe. Makes total sense to me, and I'm really, really liking that. It is in the bag. I, I am Phil. Got a putter of his, ex-putter, he doesn't use it anymore because he struggled with me. And now Wedge, I seem to want to be Phil, I think I'm, that's it, I'm the man. Post comments down below, let me know what you think. My short game's not very good at the minute and I'm hoping this will help me. I think more on my personal preference than any kind of data or facts that you can go out there and look and find. But I'm loving that, really interesting ideas in there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more videos. Find me on Instagram, at CrossfieldMark. Also on Twitter, at 4GolfOnline. Find me on Facebook, Mark Crossfield. Thanks for watching. Post comments as always, and see you soon.